will literally show you the career that you've been dying, itching, wanting to see. It is time to experience the nooks and crannies of Koreas with your own two feet on... K-Patch! With Cedric! That is right, Sky Seddy, the YouTuber's in here. He's been out with his camera, taking a video on something we dispatched him on 4K patch. Uh, it says on the script, my American friend Cedric is with me, maybe more pertinent than most weeks. American Cedric, how are we feeling? Oh, man, it's it's been a whirlwind of a week mm -hmm. emotionally. Um, you know, I, I feel very fortunate to be here. Yeah, and in Korea. To, yeah, yeah, and, you know, on many different fronts, really. But, um, yeah, yeah I, you know, things are really tense in the states and so my heart goes out to my fellow americans and you know of course my family and friends that are either directly or indirectly impacted by everything that's going on sure the america's had a tough time the past couple of months uh, with bad headlines with corona now the protests and the riots police brutality when's it gonna uh, stop man stop so, being in the head stop being greedy yeah let's yeah. all share the bad news i mean everyone is saying the u.s history books are going to be packed with the 2020 chapters so. it's going to be a <laughs> long chapter is yeah. 2020 unfortunately yeah, but luckily i'm i i count myself very fortunate right now and so it's just more so from the sidelines just watching is a little difficult but i'm in good spirits overall uh, that's good to hear i i feel like Alex, you know, he, he came in on Friday. He was not happy at all about oh, the whole man. situation. Yeah. You know, I've seen his uh, posts on social media across the weekend. <laughs> I feel he's maybe even more upset because he's watching from the sidelines kind right. of thing. But, yeah, I guess it's it's good to be at a distance personally, right? Uh, Sherry saying, yeah, boy, are these tense uh, times in the States at the moment. And VTBM saying, I bet the second wave of Corona will hit after these riots are done. That was one thing I'm quite concerned mm -hmm. with is is yeah, writing, whether it's for the right or wrong reasons, they seem to be very close, not many wearing masks and like shouting. There's a lot of like uh, respiratory droplets, I think, being <laughs> yeah. exchanged. So please be safe. Yes. How about you personally? What have you done over the past week? Cedric, anything interesting? Uh, yeah, actually, I was invited to speak at a conference here in Seoul. It was shared in our Cacao Talk group chat by our writer who just randomly came across it on Naver. Oh, wow. This post with your photo that... and a headline related to it. Yes, that is me. <laughs> that was amazing. So what were you talking about? What was the event? So the event, the conference was really uh, geared towards business leaders in Korea and also globally. And wow. so it's a huge conference, but due to COVID-19, most of it had to be streamed. So okay. there Okay. you know a certain amount of people there but it was mainly talking about money the economy globally as well as in korea wow. but there was a segment on uh where like youtubers and influencers quote unquote have uh -huh. a place in uh, the global market and so i got a chance to share my story and also uh, how uh, cultural diversity through YouTube is really beneficial in business. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you, it, was, it was a pleasure. It that was, was held here in Korea. Did you do it in English, though? I did. I did. And so the global audience could understand that. Can anyone watch that, like re-watch it? Are there well, you videos know, available? Uh, I believe so. I think they're going to edit the talking bits and uh, and post it, but I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I'd love to see that. But yeah, yeah I'll let you guys know. Great to see you on the headlines of some internet portal sites here, Cedric. Yeah, Fantastic it was, stuff. It was an honor. Uh, today's hashtag, uh, I think you may have the best this hashtag out of all of our listeners because we've all been complaining that our this is bad. We're talking posture uh -huh. or chase. <laughs> and because you work out a lot and just the way you hold yourself in the studio, mm -hmm. I reckon you have not too bad a posture. Well, uh, I think that's just for show because when the cameras are on, I kind of <laughs> prop up. But I mean, you should just see me working at home or at really? a cafe. I'm just slouching and it's quite horrible. Do you have the like kind of turtleneck thing for people who work on laptops and smartphones a lot? Uh, maybe not as severe, but I think okay. it's just a matter of my my shoulders tend to lean forward, okay. you know, instead of just kind of pinched back. back yeah so so it is a problem that i've dealt with for years that makes us all feel better that yeah. even the most posturally correct of us <laughs> although uh, all, all, albeit from appearances on the camera mm -hmm. slouch as well okay nobody's perfect there we no. go uh today's theme for k patch we're going on a little trip to somewhere very trendy yeah we're going to a hot place and this is a very interesting place that i've actually haven't been to yet mm -hmm. and so it's in the Uljiro area, 
Yeah. And、uh, the theme is Hipjiro. Hipjiro, that's the nickname of this area, this hip kind of street, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, Uchiro like, used to be famous for being very central, like north of the river,、uh, lots of businesses, and I think lots of businesses go out to eat around there, like at lunchtime and after、mm-hmm. work and stuff. And so you went and filmed a couple of videos over there. Yeah, yeah. So it was very interesting because, again,、uh, I wasn't expecting to see what I saw, but、uh, yeah, I'm super excited to share with you guys. All right. So, what's the first video going to show us? So, the first video is going to be、uh, me and Becky walking through some of the alleys of Uljiro, and you'll be able to see how old and、uh, traditional, not traditional, but just how、uh, rustic and retro it looks. Okay, okay. But then also, I'll show you an art I- exhibition that's quite unique. All right, let's take a look at video number one in Uljiro. So, we always talk about these golmokyos, the alleys.、Mm-hmm. So, quite urban. Would be a way to describe Urban it. Urban is a good way. Yeah. And as you can see, a lot of the signs, that's sort of like the older font and I guess style of writing. And you can see it's been there for a long time, some of these buildings and walls and stuff. Right. And there's a little bar pub in there as well.、It's、it looks a little、renovated. bit, I don't know if this is the right word, but ghetto. <laughs> ghetto. For soul. Yeah. For central yeah. Central soul as well. And I don't know、What、if it was due、that? to. It's,、uh, I think it's a toilet paper or something. I don't know. Wow. This is a, a very interesting art exhibition. It's、here. in a tiny little room there.、Mm-hmm. So it's in an old building. Okay. And so they pretty much just transformed this building into several different rooms of an exhibit. Is it free to go in?、Uh, no, actually. It's 3,000 won per、okay. person. Wow. So on the、cool、way、gallery. up, you see different pieces of art.、Uh-huh. And then this is where you actually go in on the top floor. Oh, wow. This is one of the rooms. Doesn't look very busy at all. No, no, it wasn't too busy. What is that? That's scary. Yeah, so this is very, I think a lot of it's open to interpretation. And this is interesting. It was just a bunch of random guys singing, I think, a military chant. Oh, okie dokie. Wow. And this next room here is just a.、Uh, I don't know who they are. I'm sure our listeners will be able yeah, to pinpoint let, that. Yeah, let、track. us know. <laughs> It doesn't look like your average gallery no, at all. No, not at all. And this is just a dark room with this screen. It's very like.、Uh, Arty, isn't it? Yeah, futuristic and trippy. I'm not usually into art in its、mm-hmm. traditional sense, but that building looks super cool. Yeah, yeah. So,、uh, you know, it has a very, what I like to call underground vibe or feel,、uh-huh. you know,、uh, even though it's above ground, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but. The style of art seems to be very underground and,、uh, you know, not mainstream. Yeah, it feels、sure. like you're in a secret gallery because I didn't see another soul in your videos. Obviously, I guess that's deliberate as well. You don't want to film anyone else, but it wasn't too busy. No, I mean, so in each room, they only allow like one person、uh, or whoever you're with, a group,、oh. to be in there just to kind of. You know, appreciate the art、really? without any interruption. And there was one more room that I could not show you guys because、uh-huh. there was another film crew apparently in there filming. Oh, wow, really? So, unfortunately, there was one more that、um, I couldn't get into. But is that a famous spot in Hip Jiro? Did you just stumble across it?、Or? No, so this one was、uh, something that、uh, actually one of our writers found、uh-huh. and recommended that I visit. So, I, I checked it out because the thing is, it It's not easily visible on the street. Yeah, because your video beforehand looked like just lots of random, shuttered up buildings. And that's exactly、open. where it was. Really? Just、right. randomly? Which shows you sort of the heart of, of that area.、Uh-huh. Just the, the new is sort of intertwined with the old. Yeah, just randomly. If you didn't know about it, I'm、mm-hmm. sure it might be difficult to find as right. well. Right. Just stumble across it. That's really interesting. What day did you go on? Is that a weekday or so weekend? That was a Saturday.、Oh. And I was surprised because,、uh, well, not so much surprised because there, there weren't too many people out there. So I don't know if it's due to COVID or just the nature of that area.、Uh-huh. But. As you saw when we were walking through the alleys, not too many people at all. What time are we talking about you being there? So I was there around two to three. Wow. So it's、yeah. not that early or anything.、Mm-hmm. And it looked a bit deserted around、yeah. there, kind of added to that 
retro ghetto feel as well. <laughs> right. Like everyone's scurrying off and scared to be out there. But we've said this many times about Korea. There aren't many places that you'll go where you fear for your safety or anything. Sure. So even right. in a place that maybe looks a bit ghetto, you wouldn't think like, I'm going to get mugged or anything like that, right? Right. But in the States, if you're in a place that looks like that, yeah. just, just don't go. Yeah. Run. <laughs> Run. Run exactly. for your life. I'd, I'd give you the same advice in the UK. But it doesn't have that feeling, like that feeling of fear at all here. Right. I wonder if those things open up like at a certain time or if they're all like down gr- not downgraded but like dilapidated and stuff like that it looked right. a bit unused right? right so i don't know if in that area it's a thing for saturdays or certain saturdays for everything to be closed mm-hmm. but it, it was sort of surprising i mean there were other shops and areas which you'll see some in the second video okay um but yeah that area was quite deserted was it close to the station to get to that coin because when you're in mm-hmm. a coin you could be miles away from the main road or you could be like literally a second away Right. It was not too far from the station. Okay. Yeah. So the main road, Uljiro, is um, fairly close. Yeah. And that's the busy, like, artery of the city where a lot of the subway stations are. There's, like, different numbers of mm-hmm. Uljiro, Uljiro, like Samga. I think there's Olga, three and five. Uh, Sarah Louise saying, like, a little hidden gem. Yeah. I'm going to have to get the address from you because that looked totally cool. <laughs> I think the kids would love it as well. And it is in, like, a an authentically old building yes. that's just been like revamped into an arty space. Right. And you can tell, even going up the stairs, the stairs were just, you could tell they were designed like <laughs> ages ago because they're so steep and unsafe. <laughs> and maybe no elevator or anything like no, that, right? No. no, don't even dream about that. Usually the modern places all have an elevator, mm-hmm. but if you go to some older buildings, which still do exist, even in this Sachogu area, which is quite a wealthy area, they have some buildings that we call Sangha, which mm-hmm. house different build, uh, businesses. They'll still only have stairs because they were built maybe 40, 50, 50 years ago uh we're gonna play some sigh perfect for the art that we just saw yes it is. it's art we are back for part two of k-patch this week talking about hipjiro the area of ujiro north of the river it's been there for a long time as you could see from cedric's first video a little bit run down um but in a kind of hip trendy way it seems from the art gallery that you took us to as well uh cisco who's been to korea many times says i've never really explored that area are there many alleys around there not just one cedric from what i saw cisco there were definitely more alleys to explore and you're gonna see in the second video uh, even like super tight alleys with like unique uh, little coffee shops and cafes uh, yeah so it's definitely worth going to that area just for maybe two three hours of exploring yeah Sheree Russell says proper use of the word ghetto you can be an honorary American <laughs> so Uchiro is the ghetto of Seoul but not in that way right it kind of looks ghetto in a trendy way right let's use that word like that perhaps you got messages from <laughs> yeah, so Joshua Lee says, if these alleyways in America uh, were in America, you would need to carry a gun with you. <laughs> Korea is so different. And that is, uh, in many ways, very true. But we won't get into that discussion because it's so controversial. Yeah, we'll stay on the <laughs> Korean side. And I think Cedric will agree with me as well. You just feel safe pretty much anywhere at any time in Korea. And 100%. That, that's one of the biggest pluses of living here that I think you start taking for granted as well. Mm-hmm. I feel it most when I go back to the UK and I immediately get scared. Like just looking at <laughs> like some teens hanging around on a street corner right. in the UK. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're going to mug me. They, they won't, almost certainly. But right. I just get weary and I'm like, on my toes kind of thing yeah yeah i mean i feel the same way but i don't know if it's because i'm generally a a bigger guy here Uh that people just you know don't even bat an eye but (laughs) i feel pretty safe but when i go back home i i feel the same as you i get a little maybe not scared but just a little paranoid i am a scaredy cat i will admit (laughs) that now Uh, sarah says those streets do look a little scary and it is a shame that it doesn't have wheelchair access yeah when you're talking about like rustic indie kind of young Youngsters, hipsters running things it's usually in those older buildings where unfortunately disability access is not so good uh, but sara there are many like art galleries in korea which have wonderful facilities for the disabled and anyone in a wheelchair so don't let it put you off coming right, right. one day um our producer came in and gave us a little kind of 411 is that the right american term 411 a little info a little info a yeah, little yeah, info I guess you could. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm trying to remember my R and B <laughs> days from the nineties. Uh but yeah, a little info on Uchido and mm-hmm. perhaps why it was so quiet as well. It's not usually like that, right, on the weekdays. Right. So Monday through Friday apparently all of those gates are open and, and they're open for business or people around. But again, I went on a Saturday mm-hmm. and uh yeah, they're apparently closed on the weekends yeah i think that area is really big for like office workers Mm -hmm. so when they're working nine to five monday through to friday there's a lot of hustle bustle and stuff like that going on weekends maybe not so much uh foot traffic in that area and then because it is so run down there's lots of places that you can get really cheap rent at right so i think right young hipsters move into those areas right which kind of makes sense why that is becoming hip jiro yeah there you go the only problem is i've seen this happen in Korea over my 10 years of living here an area becomes really hip and cool that was cheaper in terms of rent and then because it's popular and foot traffic comes in the bigger businesses start investing pricing out like the hip young people and they have to move to another area and their big businesses capitalize on it being like trendy and stuff like that i think that's happened maybe a little bit in Mm iksondong which is a favorite haunt of alex uh, segrist our friday guest i went there one time and it's so trendy there now that it's expensive even though it's like a bit run down hopefully ulchiro or hipchiro can stay hip and cheap for a long time to come Second video then, Cedric. What Second are we going to see? Well, you know, in this area, businesses are reusing the old spaces in a very stylish way. And so I'm going to show you guys a popular and unique cafe that is uh, very hard to find if you don't look hard enough. And you'll see why. So let's watch. Where are you? Are you even allowed down there? That looks so <laughs> narrow. Right. That looks really scary. It's, like, I wouldn't maybe even venture down there in Korea. I know. Yeah. And so once you go in there, then these little... <laughs> cafes start wow. popping up there's a little chim tak place over there you wouldn't even know from like the end of the alley not at all that is so retro in there and look how old the building is inside it's literally crumbling <laughs> and this is a cafe is it this is a cafe oh that looks amazing they've got the old style of korean furniture there right. with the mother of pearl like inscribed that is right. such a cool interior I don't, know, I don't know if you guys caught it, but on the menu, there was no English. It was all just Korean. Wow. So they're not catering for the international audience no, here. No. But I'm sure if you're trendy, you could go and find it. And with those lens programs now, you can get instant translations. It's busy there, though, it isn't is. it? It is. We, we couldn't find a seat. So. Oh, no. There was a seat when we walked in, but then once we ordered it, it was not. So. You had to loiter in the corridor <laughs> on the stairs. So that cafe actually had a couple of levels to it as well in, yeah. in a building. Yeah, two stories from, from what I could tell. I mean, the stairs actually went up from the second to the third floor, but I yeah. don't know if that was part of the cafe. That looks really cool. And that's odd to say about such an old building. But right. They've right. kind of left it the way it is, but just moved in kind of thing mm-hmm. and you could just tell that the the once you go in there the layout's really weird because it still feels really cramped and tight like when we were going up the stairs i didn't feel too safe and you had to be careful walking up and walking down yeah that's unbelievable was it expensive the cafe itself um no not not too expensive <coughs> at all i mean sort of um uh, middle of the road, I would okay. say. Yeah. Uh, so you're not paying too much because, like we said, the rent there it must be cheap if it's mm-hmm. in a dilapidated building like right. that. But it seems like so many people know about it for it to be that busy on a right. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And so this is again uh, on on uh, I guess online through certain avenues, like a lot of Korean natives know about this place. Mm-hmm. And, but you know the the cool thing about this area is. A lot of it is either word of mouth yeah. that you're going to find out about these places or you're just going to have to explore and find out about them. Just wander around. Just wander around. Yeah. And so um, I, I wanted to check out some more cafes, but, you know, the wallet was a little thin. So, um, <laughs> But, yeah, hopefully you guys can get an idea of just how it was, the, you know, just in the alleys, just in the nooks and crannies. That so kind of cafe is, isn't that the very definition of that trendy word here, neutro? Neutro, yes, yes. So that's another Conglish word, and it uh, basically combines combines the words retro and new. So yeah. new, tro, new retro. Yeah. Like so yeah. it's like taking something old but making it new somehow, like that building, right? Right. That's the perfect example. I've actually been to a cafe very similar to that. It was out in Incheon, and there's an area there which is famous for neutro as well. Mm. And you just feel like you've been transported in time, like to maybe the 80s or the 90s. And you're just paying for that experience. It's it's a wonderful thing. I I recommend people to definitely go. Right. Because 
I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of new cafes, the big chains here in Korea, a lot of them look pretty similar sure. inside. Like they're really clean, they're lovely, they got brilliant mm -hmm. Wi Fi and stuff like that, but it's just not a real unique experience yeah, to go. Yeah, I would say it lacks a certain character. Yeah. You know, because they're all just pretty static and basic, not yeah. in a bad way. No. Uh, but these, I mean, you cannot beat a cafe like what we just saw. It's Absolutely. So much character. I think in, I don't know about the States, but in England, England, there are literally buildings that are maybe three, four hundred years old still mm -hmm. in London amongst the new buildings. Right. So you'll get businesses that have been there for maybe a hundred years as well, like a tea shop or something like that. So you can get that kind of authentic, really old experience. In Korea, it's hard to find like a restaurant that's over maybe 30, 40 years old. That's quite a unique thing. So right. this neutral trend is kind of, I think, filling that gap. Sure, yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. Uh, we're going to get to a few posts from our listeners messages as well just tell us where is cool in your neighborhood and why it is that way do you have any neutro trends like this as well let's play some mama moo now hip it's time to get on to part three of k-patch the third and final part where we're going to get to some of our listener content as well uh don't forget the theme is trendy places where you live so you can tell us where is cool and trendy maybe a bit retro and rundown but also neutro at the same time uh before we do that i've got a couple more messages to read out sheree russell says that is cool that career is so safe it's something really that we should all have in our lives, you know, to be safe whenever we're going about our daily business. But in some countries, yeah, you can't take that for granted. You've got to be on your toes and be sensible about where you go, right? Right. Yeah. It should be a human right. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Siska says, so retro and vintage, the alley, the cafe looks nice. Yes, the cafe was super nice, and but I really did like the alley. I think because for me as a photographer, yeah, I just see so many opportunities to take great pictures. Absolutely, like, and just with some modern looking people like yourself and Becky, just standing at a retro alley would surely make for a wonderful photo. Uh, you're too uh, kind. Uh, Cam Cam says, I would not expect a business like that in an alleyway like that. Yeah, when you started going down there, was there any hint that there was something in? Did you know that was down there? Uh, so the only hint that I knew was the actual cafe, because uh -huh. that cafe had the sign on it, a okay. big sign, uh, but the other uh, like cafes and restaurants didn't really have big signage. So you uh, actually had to go inside to discover those. Yeah, I, I saw you took a shot of the kind of wall attached sign at the top. So you could see mm. that from like the entrance to the alley. Right, but again, you have to be looking for it. Uh -huh, you know? Okay, uh, we've also got a message yep, from so Fast. Fast. Fast says the alley is not pleasing to go through, but the cafe is really nice. Well, yeah, I guess it depends on... Uh, if you're claustrophobic or not. Yeah, that did look <laughs> rather narrow. But I think that adds to it, like the surprise, mm -hmm. that kind of contrast with the rundown alleyway. Right. And yeah, the cafe, to be honest, is quite run down the building, but then they've got all those new trendy baristas par pouring the drip coffee and stuff <laughs> like that. I'm sure good so looking fancy. guys too as well, right? Absolutely. Uh, Forrest Falopa says, I live in the suburb, guys. We don't do trendy. We wear sandals with socks and keep our grass less than six inches. That sounds kind of trendy. Is sandals and socks not a new fashion, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> sounds awesome, though. And Cisco also says, which one do you recommend to explore, Cedric? Uljiro Ilga, Samga, or Saga? Well, I was at the Uljiro Samga. Okay. And, uh, but, you know, I'm sure there are more places to explore at the other stations. Yeah, you can walk like between all right. of those different cars, uh, the different numbered stations you have along that road. It wouldn't take you too long. But that area that Cedric has shown us today was all out of Samga Station and not too far as well. Mm -hmm. Okie right. dokie, just into the little trendy side streets. Right. So Absolutely. some more info about Ultra before we see our listener content. Yeah, so our uh, wonderful producer also gave us some more intel. And so during the 60s, between the 60s and 80s, uh, one of the more popular or, I guess, prominent shops there were like print shops. Okie dokie. That yeah. was the industry around that there. That was the industry around there. And so uh, over time, those businesses started shutting down. And so you move forward to today, uh, a lot of 
of those buildings, which are still there, yeah. have now been occupied with the cafes and some of those little shops. Sure, yeah, because Seoul, unfortunately, the northern side of the river, which is where Ujido is, has a longer history. But some places like south of the river Gangnam, Apgujong, that kind of area, I heard that even until like the 80s, it was like marshland and really rural. There was like nothing there. Mm. So as a city, if you take it as a whole, it's not that old. So something from the 60s really stands out as being almost an ancient relic there, right, right? in Uljira. So if you want to see that side of things, you've got to go to those kind of areas. You won't find as much of that in Gangnam, I believe, south of the river, right? No, definitely not. So that area, when you went on the Saturday as well, not too many tourists, it looks like. Not too many tourists. Like I said even the cafes didn't have any english that i saw uh-huh. so uh this is very very i guess uh more so catered to those that know about it you're right? in the know you're yeah, one of the cool the kids know. then <laughs> yeah and it typically it's usually the native koreans but you know that's why we're here to give you the the intel so you can go you're not banned from going <laughs> no no that would be that would be quite bad yes <laughs> but uh so so again you you have to either come across it just walking through it or know about you know the shops here but you know the special thing is i think this is what the area and the businesses here pride itself on it's it gives the customer a sense of oh i'm special because i know about this cafe or i discovered this cafe but you know much of seoul doesn't know about it yeah so it kind of gives you that special sense yeah i'm still discovering places having lived here for 10 years that i've never been to this mm-hmm. i've never been around Ujira. I think I've been on the other side. I believe there is a alley around that area famous for the dried cod. I think it's called Mokte. Okay. And so you dip it in like mayonnaise and stuff. And I believe there's an alley there uh, where a lot of company workers go out for a beer and that anju. Uh, Nogari is the uh, correct name for it. And it's called the Nogari Kolmok, again, mm-hmm. the alleyway. And that gets really busy in the summertime. So around now, maybe with COVID-19 dying down, you'll see a lot of office workers still in their like suits and stuff, having a little drink and letting their hair down, I suppose. Oh, wow. Um, we got something from Sherry, and this is the district, the cool, trendy district in Columbus, Ohio. I'm not famous with, uh, familiar with this area. Have you ever been to Ohio, Cedric? Uh, I was born there, but oh, wow. uh, outside of that, I was just there for like the first nine months of my life. But... This is the short north area, great bars, pubs, and hangouts. Ooh. That looks really cool. The street itself there with that archway over it, really fantastic stuff. And I believe Sherry sent us a couple of other photos of the arena district which is full of fun things to do as well. We'll see if we can pull that up for you in a second. Um, And uh, she was also saying a thank you to Cedric and Peter for the insider tips. Going to note it down for a visit here, I suppose. Oh, wow. Doesn't that look beautiful? That looks nice. That's where you were born, Cedric, Columbus, Ohio. Well, not in Columbus, but like... Ohio. (laughs) In Ohio. (laughs) I have no idea of that geography. And there's an arena there as well, it looks like, where they have sporting events, concerts, and comic cons, you say. That looks lovely. I'd love to visit Columbus. I love the bright lights. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a touristy destination when people go to the States. I don't think it's Columbus, Ohio on top of their list. but Probably not on the top. Looks quite nice. There are things to do, I'm sure. I'm sure about that too, yeah. (laughs) You've got a longer message from Siska about Jakarta. Yeah, so Siska doesn't have any pics or videos, but she does recommend two trips trendy hip areas in Jakarta. Okay, the first area is Kemang area, which I'm hopefully hopefully not butchering <laughs> that too much. It's in South Jakarta. It's very near, uh, similar to Korea, or very near Koreatown. Oh, and nice. so you can find many Koreans and other foreigners hang out in this area. It's famous with trendy cafes and also art galleries. And the atmosphere there is kind of similar with a mix of Gangnam and Itaewon. Oh. So a little class with like some foreign flair, I would yeah, say. Yeah, right? and some youngsters as well. <laughs> right. And then the second area that Cisco recommends is the Manga Besar area which is in central Jakarta near Chinatown in the only and only walking distance from her house. So you can visit Cisco whenever you go there. Uh, famous as a culinary street including durian streets. Oh, that fruit. I don't <laughs> yep. know if I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also a good entertainment area too. Many karaoke's, hotels, etc. The vibe is very similar with Hongdae. Oh, cool. So, but, uh, you know, this also has a red district part. Oh, Take dear. that as you will. Don't want to go there then. <laughs> Not with the kids. <laughs> right. Hongdae definitely doesn't have that, which is no, great. No, no, yeah. <laughs> I heard that Hongdae as well, like maybe if you go back 15 years ago, it was the kind of 
hip, cheap place for young businesses to be、mm. because it's so popular. It's Quite expensive in terms of rent and stuff, but you live around the area. There's still、yeah. got, like the young trendy vibe. Still, yeah, yeah, very artsy, trendy. But now it's kind of shifted towards Yeonnamdong,、uh-huh. which is neighboring Hongdae. So yeah. yeah, that's sort of the new hot place. I've heard the rent there cheaper and stuff. And if you go towards、mm-hmm. like Mangwon, Shijang, the market area around there, you can find some trendy cafes、yeah. and stuff, right?、Uh, loads of messages from our listeners as well. Hopefully, we can get to a few of these. Cam Cam says we have in my area some warehouses turned into microbreweries. Some look like they're in old westerns.、Uh, that sounds cool. Yeah, I've seen that here as well. Some like warehouses converted into coffee shops、mm-hmm. or maybe bars. That's got a nice vibe to it as well. Josh Lee says trendy places here probably Forest Park in St Louis. It's bigger than Central Park and it's got the largest free admission zoo in the world. With a botanical garden and the biggest Japanese garden in the U.S. That sounds pretty cool. Did you ever happen to visit Central Park when you were living around that area, Cedric? I, yeah, I did a couple of times, and Central Park is huge. Really? Yeah. Bigger than like Seoul Forest Park or the parts you've seen here in Korea in Seoul, at least. Um, size-wise, I'm not sure, but I mean,、uh, it takes up a good percentage of Manhattan.、Uh-huh, yeah, if yeah. you look at it on the map, just in Central, with、well, Central, you know, obviously, <laughs> but、uh, yeah. yeah, it takes up a good percentage. Of it, so it's huge. Yeah, we're going to get to some more of your messages maybe on the Saturday weekly review as we're running out of time today. But thank you for them, and thanks Cedric for bringing in Hipchiro. I didn't even know it was called that. To My be pleasure. We're going to see you again next Monday.、Absolutely. And as ever, listeners, if you've got any themes that you want Cedric to take a video on, send them in to us. But he'll be back with some cool clips next Monday. Have a good week. Have a good week, guys. Here's Gugudan Wonderland.